Support for This is an Experiment is brought to you by Manscaped, who is the best in men's below-the-waist grooming. Their products are precision-engineered tools for your family jewels. And Manscaped's performance package is the ultimate men's hygiene bundle. Join over 4 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with the exclusive offer for you. That is 20% off and free worldwide shipping with the code EXPERIMENT at manscaped.com. If my math is correct, that's about 8 million balls. The experience is the experiment. Today's guests need absolutely no introduction. This is not their first time here, and hopefully this will not be their second time here. We basically were invited back. <laughs> You're always invited back. Oh, I thank you. This is this is three men who are taking over the world. They're still playing every <laughs> three show. Three men, like one world. World. <laughs> Please welcome wow. today's guests, the one and only beauty school dropout. How's it going, brother? Ka-chow. 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 <laughs> now we got you guys in a little better setup, hopefully. This is this nice. Is great. Are you kidding me? This is a beautiful awesome. setup. I appreciate is, you. Yeah. Well, thank you for coming back. Hey, thank Thanks you for, for having, having us. us. Every Anytime. time I've seen you guys since then, you guys were on stage fucking people's heads up. <laughs> that is actually our motto. <laughs> are we going to fuck some people's heads up tonight, boys? As, as long as you do that, it's a good yeah. show. Yeah. People love it. Surprisingly, there's a huge market for people getting their heads fucked <laughs> up. <laughs> so tell me what what's in the world of beauty school dropout outside of tattoos for the world? Oh. oh god there's so much right now the, the, so much the highlight is we just dropped our most recent single called yeah. we made plans and god laughed and it's yeah. fucking great thank, thank you, you. also the title great. track of the album yes PS, is it the PS, yeah. PS, yeah. Yeah. yeah the title track of the what album the, oh oh, oh, oh that's why i said too much <laughs> our album that drops on august 18th called we made plans and god laughed and why did go. god laugh uh, he just was laughing just, at us. He's like, hi, you had a goal? Life is, a, <laughs> life is one big sick joke. There's days where he just really rubs it in, man. You had a he goal. He really just fucking pulls his nuts out and... <laughs> <laughs> Teabags you. Just does mushroom us, does us dirty. <laughs> God, does, God does that. God. So, truly, an album... And you guys were saying what's 45, 50 songs? Uh, sixty nine. Sixty nine songs. That's it. Classic. Classic. Small. More like album. four or five. Yeah. More like an LP. Yeah. Six. Sixty nine like songs lead. that are about fifteen seconds each. So it all adds up to about eighteen minutes. Yeah, we we combine some of the songs. Yeah, we combine Quick maths. Them. Yeah. Yeah, and so we kind of diluted it down. We all did... the songs are actually the same. <laughs> they're just, <laughs> just copying. <laughs> it's six it's the one same song. Just fifteen in, second song. Just in different keys. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. It just it spans the entire. <laughs> they just get faster every time we say the hook word. <laughs> <laughs> every time the chorus comes in, it goes. <laughs> it just goes twelve like, BPMs faster. Could you imagine? And they're all just looped. What a ride! <laughs> <laughs> I wish. Honestly, we should have done that. That would have been a way better idea than what we did. Our album sucks. Groundbreaking. I'm just kidding. Our album's awesome, actually. I listen. We leaked it the other day to our, our fans on our Discord. Ooh. Speaking of which, join our Discord because it's fucking lit. And uh, it was really dope to just like be playing this whole project that we did together. And we're just like in our living room dancing and just like, kids, yeah, this is awesome. Kids are moshing in the chat. Oh, yeah. God, I fucking love Virtual it. moshing. That's, what, that's yeah. what we've reached now. We're at virtual moshing. moshing. I, that's the way the world's going. Yeah. Get some heptic feedback suits. You can feel people hit you. <laughs> oh, that, that would be so sick. Wow. I want one of those. That'd be yeah. next That'd be next level. Because you wouldn't leave if you had one of those. Bro, if I get a video game setup that I actually want, I'll literally be a hermit for the rest of my life. Like we're gonna, B's going to hire a replacement. No, I'll come out for shows. <laughs> I'll come out. <laughs> wow. It, but virtually. Yeah. It'll Not, be a projection of him, but he's going to be <laughs> he in his guy suit. Like, I still need to exercise. No, you don't. No, I do. I want they, you to be I want Beavis to get a little belly. They have those new ones where you can like walk and it'll like you'll move. I've seen that. And then the they oh, actually like the, have that. Like suit. the virtual reality yeah. ones and it's like it's, it's like, like slippery pads. It's like the three sixty yeah. it's like the three sixty uh treadmill. Yeah, you're like locked in through your yeah. hips or some I don't I don't know. Now the minute they make those like portable or you can like have in your living room. You just set up. I mean to be honest, the the quests are pretty dope. The, um, like the Facebook quest or I've never meta, heard of excuse that. me, meta. The yeah, meta get with the, the times, quest. bro. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm like, don't cancel me. I, I call. Are you a boomer? <laughs> Zuckerberg's gonna bend you over. Suck, <laughs> suck, please. Daddy, suck. What are what are these these quests? What is that? Have you not heard of this? No, I've never heard. It's of it. it's their um their virtual reality headset, so you can it's watch like quest? VR porn and stuff. <laughs> oh shit. 
through Facebook. Can't confirm it. <laughs> oh it's God. crazy. It's the only place. It's actually, <laughs> it's actually Mark Zuckerberg's porn. It's just Mark Zuckerberg's favorite porn channel. <laughs> That's the only place that I watch porn is Facebook. Yeah. yeah so it's the best kind. It That's works good. perfectly. Get your news and your porn. <laughs> News and nudes, news all in one news. place, all in one place. That'd no, but be, but uh, no, it's like they're like portable, whole like VR thing. But you can like game on it and stuff, and it's dope. It's actually really really cool. Oh shit! Okay, yeah, and it works well, surprisingly well. It like maps your room, and you can like walk around. And it like shows you where you can and cannot walk. What the fuck? Yeah. So, you're not you're not bullshitting right now. No, I'm dead serious. This is real. They're awesome. That's Bart is trying crazy. to get a meta sponsor. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we haven't even gotten to the first question yet. And he's, I don't even know, what are we even talking? About? <laughs> I feel like if you want to get the 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 bag, Meta's the way to go. Oh yeah, Dude, I met I got their Web three, the head of Web three at Meta. Did you really? Yeah, and he introduced himself as he's like I do Web three at Meta, and I'm like. You guys well, trading the NFTs? I started, I started floating a little you go, bit. That's meta. That's so meta. meta, meta. It's a, you can float in meta. It's, yeah. it's true. And if you meet somebody from meta, you can float two times as high. That's right. Mm-hmm. And when they're testing Damn it, right. they do beta and meta. So you can lay down. Beta. Yeah. 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 But you're still know, floating? I'm a, I'm a beta male. A bit, yeah, yeah, when you're like not alpha, they're beta. <laughs> Work out in meta, you might sweat a... <laughs> <laughs> That's the opening lyrics to the, to the album. Yeah. Yeah, it's actually <laughs> spoken word about Mark Zuckerberg. That's. Let me take you on a journey. I'm gonna describe the, the album poetry for, for 18 minutes. The next 18 minutes are me describing the album. Let's hear it. Let's hear okay, it. So what it opens up? If you gave us a one one sentence to explain this album, oh, that's a good question. We made an album Fucking and lit. Jesus cried. Jesus cried. Yeah. Jesus, not even yeah. his father. No, he laughed. He oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Jesus. It was a. It's actually a dis. It's a dis project. Uh, towards Jesus, <laughs> Barra's. Are you gonna include any other religions? Barra's off the rails. Are you, are you not woke enough? No, 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 no. Come on, Barra. I think I think Christianity is the least woke, to be honest. Yeah. I'm... Tell us more. Yeah. yeah. Tell, Tell us, us more. This is well, the this yeah. is the Barra podcast. I'll clip it and it'll make it sound even worse. <laughs> yeah. <do that. laughs> so no, I mean, you can believe whatever you want. I don't know. Just they killed a bunch. Maybe like I, every religion has killed a bunch of people. To be honest, I feel like just every place. That's ever Everyone been. has killed everybody. When has there not been war? Yeah. We're always fighting. It's humans kill everybody. Fuck humans. Well, that's why you guys are <laughs> playing music, to get people to take a break for a couple minutes. That's right. Or fight and that's what our it. album's about, actually. That, <laughs> that's why he, he laughed? Yeah, pretty much. I don't know. I think our album is just a bunch of songs we made. And the through line, I think, is the we made plans, the God laugh thing. It's just like, we write songs about stories that have happened, mm-hmm. and then... Here they are. And God laughs. And God laughs. God loves our little... <laughs> our tunes. <laughs> you know? Yeah, he loves our little jingles. You, you, know? just, you guys are hit, hit the right chord and you just hear... Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <What> an echo. <laughs> cool. When is the album coming out? August Can you say? 18th. August 18th? Yeah. Oh, that's real fucking soon. Right before oh. we go to uh, the UK. What are you going to the UK oh, for? We're, we're playing... We're playing... Leeds. And we have a headline show in London, and we're playing The Underworld with Static Dress, which is in Camden, which I'm very stoked about. Apparently Camden is crazy. in London, which we got harassed about. Yeah, but, but we, we don't know where the other show is. Yes. Like, re- like We're foreigners. Specifically. And if it's not the US, it's all the same. It, I feel like it's like <laughs> us. I feel like it's us like saying, like, yeah, we have a show in LA, and we have a show in Studio City. That's like what we're saying right now. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. So the <laughs> I'm, I'm going to keep saying it, though. I'm not going to stop saying that. I mean, when you get there, you'll you'll get the chance to walk around and see that it's all London. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, oh. <laughs> oh, it's five minutes away. <laughs> oh shit! Wow, that was easy. That's so that's Where's crazy. Easy you guys button? are playing in fucking London. <laughs> and last time I saw you guys, you just had a few new songs out. You were kind of getting your feet in the ground, yes, starting to play shows. Mm-hmm. And since then, I think I've seen you guys play forty, maybe seventy-five shows. Yeah. Accurate numbers. You guys were fucking going. Yeah, yeah man. Sweet. Every day, you know, that's all we do in LA. Just play, shows play shows every day. This is London. This We're in London now. Yeah, <laughs> oh. In Meta. <laughs> Anything is possible. It's actually just an ad for Meta. Manscaped. Manscaped. Uh, <laughs> this is the 7.0. <laughs> Have you fucking chopped your pubes off today? <laughs> I'll, I'll redo my ads and we'll just do it from the metaverse instead. Do you do ads? Oh my God. Yeah, I'm, we're sponsored by Manscaped. Really? Wait, really? Yeah. No way. That's, that's, that's right. what happened to me since I've seen you guys here. You have Manscaped? Shout out Manscaped. Man- Shout out Manscaped. <laughs> right on. Get you all trimmed up. Can you, wait, wait. Can you trim us? I can trim you guys. <laughs> I'll trim if I'm simultaneously getting a tattoo from that man. Wow. That yeah. seems like a great segment. I'll tattoo 
a picture of you trimming them <laughs> yeah. while you're trimming them. I'll yeah. trim the spot before you take. Dude, we got a team this here. This is insane. Why don't wow. you get a manscape? You sound tattoo. crazy right now. 50 <laughs> 50. I start gaslighting you. I'm like, wow, <laughs> wow, <laughs> wow. <laughs> this will be a 50 50 sort of thing. I trim, you tattoo. I get half the money, yeah. and we just we do that split. all day, every day. Yeah, sure. I just get cuckolded in the corner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just last. It goes, ha, ha. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys have an album coming out the 18th. Yes, sir. You guys are going to play a show in London. Mm-hmm. Where do you guys see yourself a year from right now? God, hopefully living on the road. Yeah, hopefully playing a fuck ton more shows and just Love it. billionaires. <laughs> that's a um, the I'm, first ever rock billionaires <laughs> yeah. when meta sponsors you guys when meta sponsors <laughs> Zuckerberg gets a hold of us tosses us around a little bit are you guys having as much fun as you were last time I saw you honestly I feel like more yeah, yeah. I think we're having more it's you know it's Love ups that. and downs you know I think that's the on the on a real note and this yeah. is also kind of what our album is about there's a bunch of different themes but one of one of the songs on the album is about it's called Almost Famous and it's kind of about this it's kind of about our journey from small little you know fetuses of a band feti. into yeah feti if you will into big strong rock band you know what i mean and so you hit that if you will <laughs> off, <laughs> awfully confident I'm so sorry that's B my that's my wrong B is a trigger word and it's a trigger phrase it's my it's, pet peeve if you will we found this out two days ago. We found out B gets like mega triggered and mega turned on whenever anyone says "if you will." Turned off. <laughs> so that those would be two incredible things. It's to like get angry boners. Ah, oh, <laughs> I love you. God, this is like the most tangent podcast ever. But I love it. So, but anyways, long story short, it's like yeah, it's, it's ups and downs. We have a lot of fun, and I think we've been pushing ourselves to have more fun because at the end of the day, none of this shit matters if we're not having fun. Absolutely. Yeah. I love it. And you guys look like you're having a good time. Like all the videos, like it doesn't seem like it's turned into work, if you will. Um, I'm sure there's aspects yeah. of it that oh, yeah. are. There's for sure. Are. Will yeah. always be. And that's just part of the industry. And that's part of being a creative in an industry that's run by business. But yeah. through and through the music part of it, the the creation, all of that, that seems like you guys are fucking still having a blast. Yeah. It comes in waves. Yes, even with that, I think it's like. And I think that's something I personally struggle with is like I forget what I'm doing and what I'm that I'm like what I'm doing is fun yeah by nature and I'm like overthink it sometimes I'm like oh I, a song has to be this and it has to be good and it's like well what even is good you well, know and like we you create we create rules for ourselves and we like ah and then you know but then other times it's like hell yeah let's just do something and it's dope and do you guys yeah. have a, a process that you kind of start most of your music with? Is there somebody that starts the song normally? Is there somebody that writes more? I think that we all contribute very equally. We just have like our like pieces of the puzzle. Like we each have like a very specific role in like our super the creation. Yeah, Bardo's the producer. Like he's one at the computer. He's got the sauce. Cole is definitely the lyricist, and uh, he usually if he does like come to the table with like a full song he's the one to do that um Sick. and then i'm the floater i'm just like <laughs> we gotta balance it out we gotta self <laughs> deprecation i i just picture bardo by the computer you with a microphone and you just like three feet off the ground yeah you're honestly floats, floating or yeah. sometimes we put him in a tub of like with floating and salt, floating and he just floats there. yeah yeah like a self-deprivation tank a self- <laughs> <laughs> so it's where you go to think about everything you don't want to think about yeah yeah pretty much I love it. <laughs> but it really is, yeah. Like, I'll be with Bardo for, like, half the session, and then I'll be with Cole for half the session. I love and it. And then it's just, like... I'm Hence like, being a band. F- mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I feel like that's what a lot of the music industry and, and art in general was missing. It was going to this place where it was becoming so single artist-centric. Mm-hmm. And it still is. Absolutely. And Look at every other band in LA. It's not actually a band. It's, you know, one person, one person doing everything. Who's hiring a band now. Yeah. And and I feel like I feel like it's starting people are starting to see the bullshit a little bit mm-hmm. and they want to see a band where every video is everybody and mm-hmm. it's not just like one person's face and then you see the whole band on stage and you act like everybody's part of it mm-hmm. versus like 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 clearly you're the you're the lead singer of the band but I feel like face wise of the band it's the three of you mm-hmm. like you guys are you guys are clearly working together For and sure. making something that that probably couldn't be made with just one mind yeah, yeah. we like, like to think so I, I think oftentimes like the whole solo artist thing like there's definitely a lot of ups to it that i think you will never get out of a, being in a band but yeah. also i think 
what lacks is that chemistry in the beat, like the synergy between people and having so much character on stage that it's not like relying on one person. Absolutely. But many. You know. well, and I've seen that you guys are working with people that I'm sure not too long ago you were sitting in a car listening to in headphones. Oh, Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like oh, a yeah. lot. Like many, a lot of them. Many. Yeah. That's actually really, really nuts. I think for us is like getting to work with people that we've grown up listening to and have idolized and. Yeah, at it's this just, point, we're working with our idols. Yeah, straight which up. Which is like an honor. Is there anybody in specific that you feel has been just like like kind of surreal? Yeah, Mark Hoppus is basic. He is our A&R and like our That's like crazy. mentor. And we're all, he's a part of the label that we're on. And so it's just like crazy to like be able to work with the dude that literally is responsible for me playing bass. Blink is my favorite band of all time. That's such a fucking trip. Is there ever a moment where you're sitting in the studio and you like have that moment that every artist hopefully gets to feel where where you something clicks and you just look next to you or look behind you and you're like, whoa, like like I've heard this shit happen before from these people while mm -hmm. I was a fucking fifteen year old kid mm -hmm. wishing that I was in their shoes. And now you guys yeah. are in the room with these people. I th I think that's the weirdest thing is it doesn't even feel that weird when you're in the room. Mm. You kinda but cause it's like a Every day you're doing a little bit to push the needle, yeah. And then you slowly get here, and by the time you're here, you're like, okay, yeah, like I feel like I've earned this. Like we've, you know, we're we've put in a lot of work to get here, mm -hmm. and yeah. we still got a lot more work to do. I think that's also part of it. It's like we're not out of the woods yet, you know. A lot of people like to like, yeah, you guys are, ah, and we're like, ah, <laughs> but then you know, it's like really, <laughs> like we still got a lot more work to do, and we're not the biggest band in the world yet, so yet. Yeah, and I think that's humbling, and you know, I think we like we're we maintain that like realistic view of like okay, stay focused. What do we need to do? Yeah. So well, and I feel like it takes that mindset to do things that are past just being great. Mm -hmm. If you want to be forever, it mm -hmm. takes being able to handle and create things in a level that that most people not not even that they won't that they can't do. It's that they they physically don't have the ability to handle that that much input and give that much output. Mm -hmm. um, I just had Felly in here a couple days ago. And Sick. one of the things he was saying, he was like, where I want to be is not, it's not what you most see most people trying to do. Where I want to be is, is such a, a ridiculously high level that I have to be 100%, 100% at the time mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. get there. This is a different level of, of not even success, but of, of, just like career building totally. that people don't understand. And like, you guys aren't just trying to be musicians. You're trying to be known by the world. Yeah. And that's a different fucking thing. Yeah. I think thing. it's bigger. Like, I like that you said that it's like music is cool, but like, I, and there's so many other things we want to do. Like we want to act, we want to be like entertainers. Or just, I think, I don't know. We just want to make things, create, yeah. create things, you know, creatives. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I think that stems to music, to technology, to we've gotten into like web three stuff and to like, I haven't seen you, you guys. Know, Dude. whatever but it's fun it's, i think just we're addicted to creating shit mm. yeah and is it all beauty school drop i i we talked about this for two seconds before we started but um is it all beauty school dropout like what percentage of your time is going towards working with royal or working with your sister or or, or whoever you guys i mean you guys have a group of people yeah this this friend group but also like collective of musicians that are all fucking going for it 99 percent of it is for us good now yeah. Right now. Point nine. Well, last time you guys were here, um, you you were all saying that that you are working with some other people a little bit yeah. more. Mm -hmm. So that's cool to hear that you're you're at a point where you feel like focusing all of your time on you guys, or at least ninety nine percent of it, mm -hmm. will be the the best road to get to where you want to go. Definitely, and I think now, like he said earlier, that the album is done, we definitely have a lot more time and and bandwidth to be committing to other artists as well that we really fuck with. So we're starting to, which is nice. It's been really cool. And. What do you guys see as far as as touring? Do you guys see yourself in the next year kind of still getting your chops up as far as doing like half headliners, half touring with other artists? Or do you guys think you're coming on to the point where it's like soon we're our job, unless we're playing an arena, is going <laughs> to be doing main stage? Yeah. Oh, well, you go. Yeah, it's definitely being uh, considered right now. We're there's a it's a toss up. There's a few things being rooted because obviously there's a couple different plays, right? It's like everything that we've done right now has been free in LA, so like we technically don't have many numbers on the board. But mm -hmm. in 
you know, lieu of also building a huge community of people that really are like diehard. Yeah. Um, but with that, like we're kind of talking about either doing a small run of headliners or unless, you know, one of our homies or the big dogs in the rock scene wants to bring us out as support, then that could be it too. But right now it really just makes sense. Like, or it's whatever's going to make the most sense physically for us to be able to like still do that operate and be able to like make fans performing music do the whole thing absolutely well and bardo and i before we started this we're talking about the most important thing that he was saying to you guys is the fan base it's it's the streams are phenomenal Mm -hmm. sales are phenomenal tickets are phenomenal but if you can build up the correct fan base of people that are going to support you through and through totally and help keep you guys in check when you need and help root you guys on when you need and and all these different things i feel like that's how you create something that's everlasting totally and i think even now that's more important i think that's i think a big shift in like where culture is going and where a lot of different things with i actually funny enough i see this in music but i also see this in like tech companies and i see this in you know like any any some anything that's trying to create something in a, in a, a following of some yeah. sort right and i think there's more emphasis now and it's more possible to make money off of a smaller group of people mm. You know, just because you're providing something that's more valuable to a smaller group of people. Yeah. And it's and it's more important to have a community that really rocks your stuff versus like more so than ever now. Cause it's like I mean, fuck, I streams don't make any money. You yeah. know, you can get a million streams and you make like four thousand dollars maybe, but then yeah. split that between whoever you you wrote. Fuck the song all the money with, though. Like know? like at the end of the day, the money shit is like like we can't do this at all, whether it's money, movement, culture, like pure passion for art without other people who give a fuck you know and like and like that's where it really comes down to is is like these people genuinely care and hit us up and are like hey you're changing my life with the shit that you're making like you are the reason i'm not taking xanax you are the reason i'm not killing myself right now it's because you're putting out this music what a fucking ridiculously important power that this brings yeah. To the right people. <laughs> to the right people. Cause it's it, wild, man. We all know 50 fucking artists that have 10 million streams on a song and can't fill the Black Rose. Mm-hmm. You know, you guys, whether how many streams you're getting or not, I mean, I went to one of your shows where literally, if it wasn't for fucking Pink Slip, I would have been waiting outside until the end. Like, it was, there was people <laughs> lined up down the fucking street <laughs> yeah, for you guys. Like, there was nobody else playing. It was you guys. That's how we do it. And... That was, I think, that was before you guys hit your first million streams, from my knowledge. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let alone anything else. Like, like that's that is what this is about: is going to a place where you're packing a room full of people that give a fuck about each other. Totally. That give a fuck about you, and that understand that the people they're going to see give a fuck about them. Yeah. Bro. No, it's it's so true. It's like I like you said that they give a fuck about each other because that's that's the real sauce. Yeah. Is if you know, yeah, we want people to care about us, but we really want people to care about the other dropouts in the community that's yeah. the fun part yeah mm-hmm. I mean, you get to see our f- fan base and our friends start hanging out and meeting up and yeah. making new friends because of shit we're doing that's really cool i mean that's got to just be one of the most powerful feelings and also like at the end of the day most people don't make music for the people sitting in the front of the class on the on the sports team and shit yeah. that we're mm-hmm. making music for people in the back of the class who need somebody to hold on to and need mm-hmm. somebody to hold on to them mm-hmm. and and those are the people that given the correct circumstances, given the correct opportunity, the correct community, the correct music, yeah. can make a life for themselves based off of this hug that you guys are giving them through your music mm-hmm. that is that literally could save their life in hundreds of assets or facets. Totally. Beyond and the it, mu- yeah. Go ahead. Well, I, was I was gonna, gonna say, say and it saves ours too. Like that. And beyond the music, like we're just trying to create like a space, an environment, a community that's like so much bigger than the music. Like we like go into our Discord every single day. We're hanging out with everyone that's in there. Like, if you want to join our Discord, you are like literally a part of the fam. Like, if you're into us, then we are like as much of a supporter for you. Like, Love we it. talk to all of our fans. Like, there's no separation. We there's no weirdness. Like, we we don't want there to be a divide because like if you're rocking with us, we're gonna rock with you. Like, mm-hmm. it's for the dropouts. Yeah, that's what I'm so excited for with like touring and stuff. Is just getting to meet everyone in person, and because like, people like. People have been patient if you really think about it. Like we've gotten DMs for the past two years of like, like, hey, can can you guys come here? Can you guys come here? And it's like, 
a, people want us to come to a lot of places. You know, I mean, it's like yeah. they've been patient. They're still asking, and we're like, hey, well, and they're, we'll be there. They Working want you to it. come to play your instruments too. Like, what a again. fucking trip. People want you to go travel across the country. Yeah. yeah. And they're going to use the money that they went to work their, their job they fucking hate. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they're going to sit outside in the cold or the heat or whatever the fuck it is to go see and support you guys. Yeah. yeah. Oh, exactly. I think that's kind of what I was saying earlier. It's like, it's not about the music. It's not like, it's like, the, it, it's the, the experience and what you're building is more important than anything else and like it's like that's that's what the value is like yeah the experience it's like summer camp you know well and i think there's a lot of people who are really good at (laughs) there's a lot of people who are really good at making it seem that way when they when they need to Mm -hmm. and then you know it's all it's all fake it's all this bullshit act and from my perspective knowing you guys outside of you guys just sitting on my couch and us filming ourselves Mm -hmm. um (laughs) that's who you guys are yeah and 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 every time after every show, I my my goal is to just I don't need to see the people who played. I don't need to go fucking sit there and, and, and crowd you guys. But I always just like to let you guys know, like, yo, thank you. That was amazing. Thank you for that. And thank every you. fucking time I hit any of you guys up mm. within 10 minutes, I have an, a, a message back saying thank you so much for coming. It means the world to me. And like, yeah, yeah. that's. I have the opportunity to sit here with you guys without having to pay for a show. Mm. I'll pay for a show any day. But like that that makes me a fan you know yeah. like good thing all our shows are free <laughs> <laughs> so far not so far. In, in one day free the, the next show is a thousand dollars yeah ticket, actually I'm gonna and be there's one helper. ticket there's there's one gonna be 50 ticket. it's a one ticket show for me. Yeah. One person. but the guest list is fucking massive yeah you can bring whoever you want <laughs> all of la yo that's a crazy concept so, <laughs> so one ticket That'd be cr- that would be wild and it's an nft yeah it's one one ticket one ticket but your guest list could be fucking this the whole city. and then you're like wow i just sold out this venue like fifty thousand dollars. everybody ticket. pull up if you can't make it inside like Bro, why don't we we'll do, do that? a little thing outside <laughs> so, that'd be fun as fuck that'd be yeah funny as fuck why not i'm i we've been talking i've been i'm gonna be doing some this is an experiment show soon maybe sick. that's how we'll go about it sick what, what, we'll do a real experiment? experiment that's the podcast as this is oh idiot wow you've said it before i've totally said i that. have video of you saying i was this like, Bardo, like been... get out <laughs> We're, we're, did we do video last time or was it just no, audio? this was, we didn't do this a video. was the first video so it's it was, almost been a year been since a you guys year. were here wow that's fun I was like that's funny you said this thing I'm like that sounds like a really interesting great podcast like thank you what do you do on that one <laughs> I'm like oh yeah it's this one that I'm figuring it out oh, as yeah. I go <laughs> we talk about the metaverse this. For some reason, I thought it was called different. I don't know. Thirty known, minutes of love, meta. Is Lover Boy? Like, I've just known that. You can it, beep it, what he said. Just beep it. The just whole thing. Beep is it. Beep is it. Yeah. So <laughs> you know, no, you know just what to say. <laughs> what uh, what else is in the works for you guys right now? Is there anything else you want to bring to your shows, or you're planning on bringing that you can talk about that's going to set you guys apart? The from new the music. world. Our guitars. <laughs> <laughs> Just all flying bees. Yeah. But no <laughs> strings. No um, strings. We actually dude, all that real bass. raw energy. Like Jaleel. Shout out Jaleel, bro. Out Jaleel. He brings that real raw energy. I think that's why he's so successful at, at his live shows. Who's this and, Jaleel man? Oh, bro. He's the most lit. The most lit human being there is. Seriously. Like but check it out. His his music is just so fun, but also his charisma and his character as a human is just so undeniable and i'm, it, I'm like, gonna get you on this show J- Jaleel. Yeah, no, you he, should he'd, he'd be, Jaleel? He'd be, yeah Jaleel. he'll be good for for this show it'd be awesome he'd Jaleel, probably be down. Yeah. he does backflips off things and rips his shirt and fools <laughs> ripped like terry cruz like it's the most like anomaly honestly human more ripped seen. it's fucking than awesome. terry cruz. yeah we met Ooh. him on melrose like three when we both had five, just like, like yeah almost five years ago cole and i were hanging out he with had him. just moved here i was still homeless like i think Jaleel might have been floating around too like it's been crazy to watch. Who is this man? Yeah, you gotta check it out. An you absolute check it out. sweetheart. Yeah, he's dope. yes, he's yeah. really nice. Well, I'd love to have you on, Jaleel. Yeah. Um. So, what else is going on in the lives of of Beauty School Dropout? You guys are signed. Signed. Signed, signed to Versewire. Signed, sealed, delivered. Who are yes. you signed, sealed, delivered by? So, Versewire is this mm. uh, new venture between Mark Hoppus, Sherry Sahidi of Veeps, and Pete Wentz of Fall Out Boy, and, and Nick Lipman, our, our manager. Just the yeah. Pete Wentz. Yeah, Mr. It's Peter. Fucking crazy. Daddy Peter wins. And so you guys are like with these people quite often. Yeah, we're yeah. the only act signed right now. You know what's oh, funny shit. though is like for as much as we work with Sherry and Mark and Maya and Nick, I run into Pete so <laughs> like randomly more than I do work with him. 
That's so, it's so funny. I see him in, everywhere. Did you ever run into him before you knew him? Never. No. Never. That's the weirdest shit in the world. So random. You meet somebody once who who you've looked up to your whole life, mm -hmm. and then you meet them once, you have the opportunity to get their fucking number, mm -hmm. and then you run into them randomly 500 times? Very yeah. serendipitous. Where did it go the first fucking 20 years? That's yeah. what I'm saying. <laughs> That's pretty wild. Seriously. It was cool. They're very supportive, and they like love what we do. And it's just cool. It's cool. We'll just hang out and, and I mean, we just cuddle all the time. And that it, that's Sick. how their music was made. Cuddling. Cuddling, pretty much. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's so crazy. <laughs> it's, it's so crazy. You guys are fucking making music with the, some of the greatest of all time. Yeah. It's been well, pretty insane. You know what I, was, I think it's like where I, I don't know, maybe I see it this way, but it's like we're hopefully taking the torch. You know what I mean? And hopefully they can deliver this torch to someone else down the road. Because mm. that's, I mean, they all had bands that they looked up to. Yeah. That they were like, in our position, their 20s, they're like, ah, I'm with this guy. Ah. And then like, but now they're where they are. That's and it's so awesome. And it's like, cool. Like, I just want to be able to be that, you know, and like take over and like, cool, we got this. We're going to make you proud. And yeah. then pass it on when the time is right i think that's really cool mark well, talks about it a lot all the bands that like he like co-signed once he had already made it and like put them on as much as he could and like it's crazy like who those bands are and like it's just like being drake. able yeah he put on drake yeah it's crazy. <laughs> a lot of people yeah. don't know that mark hop god drizzy drake what yeah <laughs> mark Hopkins. what yeah how how did that happen he went to toronto and was like, <laughs> like Drake damn, this him. dude is crazy. <laughs> That's fucking. Turns out Drake is like a massive Blink fan. Like Adam's song is like Drake's like shit. Who isn't though? That's yeah. the thing. I Marvin's think... room is actually written about Adam's song. <laughs> Adam's song is actually about Drake. Drake, yeah. is, Drake <laughs> is Adam. <laughs> this, That's so this wild. Metaverse. <laughs> That's so crazy that that this is all libel. Who put him on? Oh yeah. I mean yeah. he's. Possibly one of the biggest ever. <laughs> <laughs> right? That's, that's fucking it's, ridiculous. And so we're just, we like to think we're like, Where does that we're like Drake 2.0. That's kind of like what we like. When people ask what this album is, it's actually Take Care 2.0. Drake without the Jewish. Well, with the uh, no, Jewish. No, I'm Jewish. You're Jewish? Yeah, I'm very Jewish, yeah. No, very Jake, Drake with the Jew. You're Drake. <laughs> Drake, Drake, Drake with the Jews. Drake, Drake and the Jews. Drake. Drake. Yeah. Extra Jewish, actually, yeah. That's killer. Uh, yeah. Jewish. You got to come to a Shabbat sometime. Oh, bro, please. I'll let you know. I'm so down. Oh, yeah. Let's go. Oh, yeah. Are you kidding me? You have you, wait, Jewish. how old are you? 26. Fuck. Can you, oh. Have you taken your birthright trip? Yeah, I was going to say. No, not yet. You Can you still take it? Yeah. Bro, we should go. What's the age? You want to go off? to fucking Israel together? That'd yes. be lit. Dude, I, we're Yo, gonna, I'm so down. I'm going to book my flights tonight. How? What's the, what's the cutoff? <laughs> That's fucking, what, what's the cutoff? Wait, you're I think joking. It is, I think it is 26, but you might be good until, like, No, it's 32 out. now. What or thirty something? Yeah. What? Drake, Drake go? Bro, yo, we should get like get as many of the Jewish homies to just like pack out on a birthright trip and just spend two weeks and. In... What if we book you guys some shows there and then you just got then one? We, then, then we can yeah, go. There we go. There we <laughs> go. go. For it. <laughs> you, people are like, what do you guys do? We're on our birthright trip. You guys could be Jewish. No. They'll never know. I got blonde hair too. It's just not real. Just but <laughs> neither is yours. That's true. I'm about to Jewish. shave my head. Shave, shave, shave. Oh yeah. Really? Go back to my roots. Wait, uh -huh. you had a shaved head? Yeah, for like a long time. When no I first way. moved to LA, I was doing the little model thing. He's going I full, can see you killing that. On him. Thanks. For sure. He likes to go with the shaved head. He really does. I'm I'm a big supporter. Yeah, he talked about it. I feel like you it. could pull it all off, though. Thanks. You got you got you got it. You, you saying got it. I got the face for it? You got the face for it. Yeah. Thanks. That radio face. That's what I that's what I was going to say. <laughs> wow. The podcast face. The podcast face. The video podcast. The video podcast yeah. face. This kind of podcast. Damn, I'm excited for Shaved Head and Israel. Yeah. Damn. What are you more excited for, though? Uh, fuck. I'm going to go with Shaved Head. Sick. You're my in new best Israel. friend. You're my new best friend. We're going to shave your head in Israel. We're flying yes. to Israel to shave your head. <laughs> you guys really and then right the back. How long birthright? It's like what, two weeks. Two weeks? Yeah. Easy. Mm -hmm. And then like most people extend it for like a week and they'll go to like... I don't know anywhere around I've heard, there, Egypt. I've heard like through my Jewish friends that they're like, "Well, this is actually one Jewish friend that told me this." But <laughs> like, he's sitting right next to me. It actually, wasn't even this Jewish it was another Jewish friend. But she went on birthright, and she's like, she's like, "Yeah, like it's really weird. They like try to like make you like hook up with everybody." They definitely and want you to like. They want you to stay. They want you to stay. Recreate like, more. Yeah, people. exactly. But like, they were like, 
they'll have you hang out with like the army dudes. Like, yeah. All the girls will, like meet like oh meet all the army guys because everyone has to be in the army. Well, and they'll give you like, so you have like damn, one wild. or two armed guards with you at all times. Oh really? Um. Oh, yeah. What? Yeah. So like no way. I don't know. I, I that's at least so I've been to Israel. I went on like a different trip, which I'm still good to go on birthright. Yeah. Um. But we had an armed guard with us the whole time. No way. Damn, I guess it, I mean it kind of makes sense, isn't? Like, there's some some shit going down over there. Some shit going down. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's you know it's a it's an amazing place, but it's it's got it it's got its shit going on. It's got, it's got a lot shit. of history of yeah. just yeah. It seems like the whole world is kind of. I, I would love to go there. Up in arms really cool. right now. My uh, so the label I work for, the three guys who started it all is Rayleigh. They just moved here last year. Very cool. That's and one cool. of them has the most fucking gorgeous studio built out of a bomb shelter in his kibbutz in Israel. Wow, wow. that's that's, that's crazy. crazy. That's really cool. And the kibbutz is like a kind of like a commune. Mm. Um, yeah. yeah, I guess it's like almost exactly like a commune. It's like everything shared. But there's they're everywhere in Israel. I don't I don't know if you knew this. I just found this out and fact check me because I could be wrong, repeating this wrong. But I was <laughs> just I was just talking to a friend who was telling me about like Chabad houses, which yeah. are essentially in like every city around the world. Yeah, and that is the segment of Judaism that pretty much believe like whether you're practicing or blood lineage or whatever, you are still considered like a brother in the community. 100%. And so when you go there, they like take you in, yeah. give you a meal welcome you give you tour you know there's hospitality i did it in college really yeah oh so cool wait so what you just traveled and went to chabad house no so i just did the one on my campus Mm -hmm. um but like they would have like parties and shit and then if you go study they'll give you money like jewish parties but they get lit yeah bro and they would pay you to study yes so they had these stuff these things where they'll pay you you? i think it was like 500 bucks or 200 bucks or like something a day no no just for like this like three week study but you just go for like an hour or two once a week really yeah i didn't do it that was too much for me. Damn. But I should have. Now I would. Cole, go get your bag. Yeah. yeah. I'm down. I'm seriously yeah. interested in it. A lot of religious studies fascinate me. Jewish. I love it. You know, I'm not the most religious person, mm. but spirituality, I would say it's more important to me. Definitely. But my great grandma was in the Holocaust and I grew up like going to Holocaust museums with her holding her hand as a kid. Like, wow. So there's this connection to it that I, mm. I love and I respect and I'm always going to be proud of it. But it's just like, the religious part of it is just, it just doesn't. Which is crazy to me. think about. Like, really think about that really quick. She lived through the Holocaust. Was your grandma? Great grandma. She, she just passed a year and a half ago at 90 some, 98 years old. RIP. Yeah, we like to live lived, a long time, huh? She lived a long fucking time. But think about how crazy it is that she lived through that, something so deeply traumatic and just like scarring to the entire history of the world. Yeah. And can go into a facility that is displaying that. And is like, you know, I mean, I'm sure triggered in some regard, oh, but yeah. it's like yeah. existing in that. Whereas like, I don't know, I just think about some of the modern problems that we deal with, at least out here in L.A., just like how upset people get over the weirdest shit. The weirdest. And well, it's like, what? Like <laughs> The worst thing that's ever happened to you is the worst thing that's ever happened to of you. Of course, of course. But There's getting the opportunity to everybody. walk through there, and I remember to a T – Walking through this one area where they were showing like bodies and shit, whatever. But she, I remember her squeezing my hand as a little kid, and I remember it hurting. But me knowing, and me being like, "Am I really gonna say something right now?" Because because I have a little pain in my hand versus the fact that she's walking through mm. memories yeah. that nobody wants to remember. So, so she actually was she at a camp? She was in she was in Auschwitz. Wow. So and she then was liberated when the soldiers yeah, came. Yeah, like her half her family was gone. Wow. Um, went to the half her family went yeah. to the concentration camp half her family went to the labor camp bro that's crazy um, and she sent her little brother to the other line because she found out that the other one was the work camp and she was in the death camp and they switched it and she like blamed herself her whole life for it that's so sad oh so she went to she ended wow. up going to the labor camp she went to the death okay. camp too but they were that liberated so right heavy. before i'm pretty sure Damn. Wow. Um, she's got like a book hmm. out and everything like it's 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 crazy but the one thing that I learned from her that I try to communicate via the podcast and mm-hmm. via just relationships is she said that she she was never she she forgave mm-hmm. like she forgave these monsters because not all the monsters were monsters because they wanted to be. And that mm-hmm. was her whole thing it was like, like, what do you do if your family is going to be shot or you shoot somebody like what decision do you make? Yeah, it's it's Dude, what wow. a crazy. crazy time. That was like, like I was just like, I'm a big history nerd i love like world war ii like documentaries and stuff yeah. it's so fascinating but it's like crazy like the psychology of the time of like what people were going through over in europe and then like on this you know our side it's like 
how we just rallied as a nation. We're like, yeah, let's go fuck some shit up. I'm like, it's we're going to like crush this. You I know? mean, the times are just so, they've changed so much. Her parents were born in the 1800s or her grandparents. No, mm. her parents, I think too. The 18 fucking hundreds. <laughs> wow. That's crazy. She and was I, born in the 1800s? No, her, no her, her I think it was either her parents or her grandparents. <laughs> Bardo has her family hearing. that she knew was born in the 18 fucking hundreds. I don't even know if they had wheels back then. They had wheels. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know. Was it wheels like the first thing we made as humans? No, fire. It fucking better have been. Fire, and then we made wheels out of fire. And yeah. then they saw the wheels and they're like, fire. Burning wheels, fire. I was like, oh, fire. fire. Ring, fire. Damn, that is fire. They said fire first. What, did, what yeah. is that whole, what was the, the Ice in my this veins. Was the first thing. Like, like, icy. What up? Or is it hot? This is what the cavemen did. And now that's what, this is the time we live in where people go around doing this. Yeah. What are times like, have changed? When we have grandkids and they're like, I remember TikTok. <laughs> Dude, that's I, our legacy they're just gonna make noises <laughs> at each other and like growl and be like Argh! and they're like oh well, yeah i know what that quest. means they just they're... start regressing back to to caveman times <laughs> oh just my straight God. Up, like we might dude i don't know we got some the, me- the meta quest the everyone's meta quest. gonna be in floating tanks with a giant <laughs> just just their head, head like fucking what is it family guy or south park or yeah. yeah i'm actually not scared of that i think like bodies hold us back hmm. like truly yeah, I think like it would be cool like when our bodies aren't the things that we're bound by. What do you think is going to be the first step to to true like integration outside of the fact that we're completely integrated with our phones already and computers? But like, do you think it's going to be virtual reality that takes over first, or like uh, yeah, Elon stuff? The... I think Elon and Zuckerberg are going to drop a sex tape, and then the world's <laughs> yeah. just going to explode. Yeah, that's probably what's going to happen. On a real note, though, I think no, that I'm technology playing. just has to get to the point where it's believable. Mm. Like, because, yeah. like, right now, I think, like, when you go into any, like, VR or something's AR or any Augmented change reality, reality yeah. yeah, like, it's, like, there's this element of, like, not real. Yeah. And so, like, as soon as you can't tell, I think people will feel comfortable switching. Do you think that there's going to be a point in our lifetimes where we see the vast majority of people going that direction versus reality, if you will. Totally. You can we'll already see, make a we'll living. We'll see a split for sure. But I don't think the trajectory of it's going to be like one singular event. I feel like it's going to be just like continuous growth with the advances of technology. You'll see the same with user retention until it's just like 90% of your day yeah. is in your screen or 99. I watch a lot of anime, whatever. so I think I'm just more anime porn. susceptible. Bardo's got to make everything weird for me. <laughs> Everything's porn. You're the one watching it. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. But, like, I think porn. I'm just, like, more accepting of, like, these crazy, like, possibilities. Because, like, a lot of the shows I watch are just, like, it's, like, like that. So, like, they receive technology and they, like, accept it. And it's, like, so dope. And I want to live in that world. There's this VR place. I'll, I'll take you guys soon. I guess I don't need to take you guys up cars. Um, <laughs> I'll still take you. I'm going to rent a fucking bus. <laughs> oh, <thank> you. <laughs> Will you pick us up, <laughs> please? <laughs> just going to honk one day and be like, it's time. <laughs> Ready. <laughs> okay, cool, guys. We're going to go. There's this, this VR place at the Westfield Mall in uh, one of the Westfield Malls. Mm. Whatever. Um, What's it called? The Westfield Mall. <laughs> oh, no, I don't remember. I, I don't remember what it's called, but it's similar to Sandbox. Okay. Um, and I've been like six times. I've been with my girlfriend a few times with my family. And you go in, you put the headset on, you put this like shoulder thing on, and you go into this room that has sensors everywhere and all these machines. And you can go in and do like almost an Indiana Jones style game. You can mm-hmm. do this one what's called Alien Zoo, and they take you, like, fly you to the zoo that's in space, and they have like the last of each different type of humanity mm. that's been around. So like certain type of dinosaurs in their exhibit, and the last one is like a house with a little pond, and there's like a family playing by it, and like that's the last one, like kind of showing that we're fucking up our Earth, and that's where we're headed. Yeah. And there was points when I was in this one, and then in this one that had like these dinosaurs, where there were moments where I was like, I could, if I stayed here right now, I don't think I'd be upset. Like Mm. it was, it was, there was genuinely parts that were as exciting, if not more exciting than real life. Mm. And I remember having these dreams and like almost nightmares, like the weeks prior or uh, after where I'd wake up and I'd be like, am I still fucking there? Like it was so freaky. Any more real. I don't know if I'd feel comfortable without like easing into it. It was so fucking real. I'm sure they're still going. It was before COVID, but yeah. it, it's it's one of the most amazing things. Like seeing my dad, like us going to buy a cliff on this roller coaster and you drop and you feel yourself drop. Like the floor moves down. Oh, it's crazy. And I heard my dad fucking shriek. <laughs> well, when I, they get the technology where they have the haptic feedback, 
but it's kind of like it's like we were talking like the suits they just made one they just made one yeah and it you literally can... like if you get shot in a game you feel it hit you i wow. mean it doesn't hurt obviously but yeah. you feel where it at like the size of a bullet wow and they're gonna eventually have them where you feel a fucking 50 caliber versus a nine millimeter yeah right? like You're really like, oh, oh that is a whole... it's been wild. so weird but it's it's cool i think that's like i think it's kind of rad in a way you know i don't know i just like it's scary on some level, but I think it's really cool. Do you know about what's it called? Is it Moore's law? Moore's law is if something can happen, it will happen, or is it Mur- that's Murphy's law? I got high during school. I yeah, know. I don't know. It's something with an M, <laughs> maybe, Facts. or maybe Retweet. it's not even with an M. It's something. <laughs> the idea of this thing is that it's technology is exponential, and yeah. the growth of technology is exponential. Exponential. It's like if you look at the last ten years, what we've accomplished in ten years. You know what I mean? Like the past four years but like oh no cars that drive themselves to like cars that drive themselves and we're like what no everything is like this and it's growing 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 but the idea is like you know if a computer chip can process the power of two the next year will be four next year will be eight and it's all exponential and it's like totally makes sense so at a certain point like i honestly think the haptic feedback shit and like all the vr stuff that we're doing it's gonna be very very realistic in our in our lifetime yeah the next 20 years it'll be a quick switch it'll probably be one of those things where you're like oh wow that looks a little too real and then you're gonna be like that's real yeah like just like that like it's gonna be such a one update and everything it becomes seamless mm-hmm. and i'm then, just trying to play rocket league first person <laughs> yeah i'm just trying to play fifa he wants to be the rocket well think about how There's much no rockets Think about how much will come out of VR too if it's that realistic, like therapy wise. Mm-hmm. Like being able to, like some fucking kid who has um, autism and is afraid of of uh, lightning, you can like ease them into it and show that it's okay to be in the house during that stuff and you don't have to freak out. Or like yeah. somebody who's afraid to drive on the highway. Like or what just, if like, you can straight up strike yeah, with lightning? Super. Dude, I did. I did neuro. <laughs> I did neuro feedback when I was a kid. Do you know what, what that is? What is, is that, is that when they read your brain while you're doing things? Yeah. So it's like, because I have OCD. And so like when I was getting treated for as a kid, I was like, I'd be hooked up to these machines. And you'd like, I'd do it a couple different places. But like this one place I'd go to, they'd like sit you down. They'd strap you into this like this chair. And they'd put like, it sounds a lot scarier than it is to be honest. They're like, shocking you. They started fucking electrocuting me. No, but like they put these like electrodes on your head in the certain like yeah. points of your brain. And you basically stare at the screen and it's kind of like you're playing a video game like there's a cars racing Mm -hmm. but it's almost like you just you you can control it but you also can't at the same time like it's going but like the your calmness dictates how fast the cars go wow Mm. and it's like so it's like the car is gonna go but it's like if you want the car to go you like calm down or like and so your brain starts to like reconnect and make these like it starts to learn basically That's that like, crazy. Oh, if, if I, I, you get rewarded by doing these things, but all the while it's like feeding your brain, like electro magnetic rewards or some shit. I don't know. It was weird, but, that's yeah. that's so crazy. I mean, so, but think about that. But mixed with VR, I was about to shit, say, what you if know? you can control your car? Yeah, like that. Like you're in the back, you have your your goggles on, just fucking sitting in a chair. Your car is driving. You're playing a video game at the same time, mm-hmm. but you know you need to turn right in fifty feet. You want to make a diversion, so you just think about it. Yeah, like some crazy it's shit. Really cool. I'm excited. Yeah, I think it'll be dope. We it's won't see B anymore, but. <laughs> Um, He'll show up for shows. He'll be there. Yeah, I'll be at the shows. Yeah. I'll come to rehearsal. I'll come to VR. But I'm not playing the VR full show. VR rehearsal? He's got a full juggernaut suit on. <laughs> <Yeah>. like, <laughs> totally VR'd out while Guys, we're playing. I do everything for the live show. That's all I care about. That's like the most important thing to me ever. Mm-hmm. Is a live show. Same. Yeah. Well, Literally. you guys show it when you play. You guys are, you, your energy shifts to the crowd very quickly. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. We very quickly. We're very like demanding. But but that's <laughs> demanding is what people want. People aren't going there to to decide their own decisions while they're at the show. They're yeah. going to step away from the bullshits of, the bullshit of life real it's fast. True. Yeah. yeah. People you guys secretly aren't demanding, get turned then. on by being told what to do. Yeah. They say Why they not? don't, but they love it. It's escapism. I love it. Like I love being at a show and when the artist is like commanding the crowd. Oh like God. it is like it's so visceral. Dope. You're like now and, part of that hive mind and everyone's yeah. like, Oh yeah. You gotta be good at commanding Woo! it. You're Absolutely. bad at commanding it. Like 
come on, everyone, clap your hands. <laughs> like, well, they have Ow. to believe you. Like yeah. that's yeah. the thing. You guys aren't. If you if you if you play this character all day long, then in moments when when it's important, you have to try to stay in that character. Mm. If it's if you're just being yourself and that's what you're meant to do, when you get on stage or when you get in the studio, when you're fucking taking a shit, you're gonna be the same person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It just is what it is. Like that's you guys just got lucky enough to find the correct path that actually fits who you are as people and what you're able to do and how you work together. And like, feel blessed it's working as well as it is. Yeah. As like a... Yeah. Well, and the fact that you most bands don't make it as long as you guys already have. Like, think about that. That's Most of the bands we've seen are probably the 5% that made it. Mm -hmm. And I don't mean made it as far as made it and like they're selling tickets. I mean made it as far as didn't rip each other's fucking heads off. Mm. Or or at least didn't after ripping each other's heads off figure out how to not rip each other's head off next time because like i think when you become that close like family it's important to to fucking beef sometimes mm -hmm. talk it out and then walk away and fucking enjoy your day yeah it's we definitely... rip each other's heads off and yeah. then cuddle the head yeah. <laughs> yeah it's very much so like brotherly in that way or just you know siblings in the way that we definitely fight over certain things, but not in a in a aggressive, like malicious way. Yeah. In a very just you know opinionated. Obviously, we want what we want kind of way, Absolutely. but we're very good at dealing with that, shaking it off, throw some dirt on it, whatever, and then kiss and make up. I've always been viciously curious. make out and make up, kiss and make out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just and then you start making. Yeah, out. yeah. Uh, <laughs> I've always been curious about how that works. If you guys, let's say you're working on a tune. Mm -hmm. one of you wanted something the other one wanted something else and the third one wanted something else how do you guys sit down and decide is it based off of you all try your ideas and whatever is it truly the best wins it's or russian roulette we just pull a pistol and we just <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty democratic there used to be there used to be eight of you guys yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah it's crazy bummer, bummer man i don't know but yeah. we do really rock the shit like a democracy like yeah. if we had three different ideas i think the three of there's always usually two v one at bare minimum, but like yeah. if all three of us had completely different ideas, we are good enough at communicating that like we can just be like who actually has the best yeah. idea. There's Having... generally one that stands out too. It's like yeah. not yeah. like it's a super hard decision where we're like, oh, which yeah. one's better? Yeah. 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 Having three of us is nice. It's built in decision making, which is mm. nice. We triangulate. Think, and, yeah, and we're good at like, okay, cool. If two other people are against this. Like, we'll present our cases. Like, yeah. there'll be times, like, no, guys, I really think. And, like, it'll, that will sometimes even sway it. But, like, we're good at, like, okay, you know what? Fuck it. Let's just let's go that way. We and we agree a lot yeah. on mm -hmm. ideas. We've worked really hard on our own, like, ego deaths with each other. Like, that was the Russian roulette part. Yeah. <laughs> it's <laughs> ego Russian roulette. But, yeah, I think, <laughs> like, death. Yeah. none of us, like, hold on to our ideas so dearly that, like, we would take any offense to some one of the other one of us not liking it yeah mm -hmm. like it's like if i if bardo doesn't like my idea like it's probably a reason why he doesn't like it we guys trust each other's opinions too. yeah yeah i look up to them if you have one person in the group who everybody clearly knows is not able to hold their weight it's gonna be harder to listen to that person mm -hmm. if you have three people in a group who are very clearly able to hold their weight in whatever position they need to be they're, they're put in yeah then a decision is it's good versus good versus good versus a really shitty idea yeah sure. i think also something we've been tapping into too is like there'll be times i know for me personally i'm just like i'll just do whatever you guys want to do because it's not my department you know what i mean that's and i'm just too. like yeah like know your guys, place like i don't care like you know i trust you guys yeah. if it's something is if you guys are fucking up i'm like guys this is really bad let's not do this or something or like but it's like hey you guys run with it because i you guys are good at this shit so do it you know we're vulnerable with each other. Yeah, <laughs> we're also very good at picking up the momentum fast. Like the, it's never really a thing of like, mm, like the inception of our songs or anything that we're creating generally never take more than two minutes. Really? Yeah, it's like we write and produce everything in two minutes. All at <laughs> no, once, but, we master it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, all your songs at the same time too. <laughs> no, but it's just like there's. I think that's kind of part of the flow is being able to curate those ideas as we go. Right? 100%. It's not like we're like sitting. The hardest part would be having that battle, but with the first idea. But generally speaking, mm -hmm. usually it's like whatever the first thing is, we're like, okay, cool, yes, and whatever. Yeah, and sometimes it won't even be that initial thing that stays, but we get something great out of it. I feel like it's almost like stats in a video game. You have like three characters, 
everybody has nice stats, but everybody has a different, a different higher line in their stats or whatever. Yeah. Oh no, exactly. Yeah. Somebody exactly you can lean on like. for each sort of totally. thing. Yeah. We all got our, our superpowers, you know? And you guys have a drummer that is in the band, not in the band. Is the best drummer in the whole fucking world. Mike Rose drums. Michael Literally Rose Jones. MRG, baby. You guys told me Disgusting. that last time he was <laughs> Disgusting, here. Disgusting, bro. He keeps getting better, too. I'm like, Dude, oh, God, what's wrong with you? Every time he starts playing during your guys' shows, I'm like, okay. Yeah. We, yeah. we understand where it's at within the first fucking hit. The dude is so good. He's so good. He's a click. There's, there's two drummers right now that, live show-wise, that I've seen in the past few months that blow my mind. Him and then Tosh the drummer. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. You guys know Tosh. Tosh yeah. so they, they I played really a show awesome. with him with... Royal. And it's, so and it's cool, cool because they're both different flavors. Mm, you know? Very. Tosh is like, and it's kind of weird. It's like, I've kind of gotten more into like drumming after hanging out with Mike so much because it's like, you just kind of pick up on these little things, but they really are different flavors. Like, Tosh has a totally different style and Mike has a different style, but like, they're different. And I like that Absolutely. they're different. It's not like there's two Toshes running around LA. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. or there's two Mike. It's like, oh, it's Mike and Tosh. But like, it's truly, yeah, Mike is fucking. It's Mike and Tosh. Yeah, it's Mike and Tosh. Yeah, it's a drum software brand made for <laughs> made for drummers to date and mingle in LA. It, it is cool though to see, like, because and Mike mingle. is drumming for a bunch of different people. You know, he's like he's the we call him the people's drummer. We do because mm-hmm. he's just he's the best drummer and like he's like very sought after and it's really cool to see a bunch of people want to work with Mike. And people like, are definitely picking up on it too. It's dope. I love it. Like yeah. we love getting like we're like yeah fuck it or like anyone's like I need a drummer like. We got you. Like, Bro, we, were you we, at the Deadly show? Deadly show. Do you know Deadly Jaffe? Emo is dead. No, but I saw the fucking videos after. Mike was the drummer he for played everybody. Everybody. Except That's for like so two sick. acts. Yeah. It's crazy. He My just bu- like stayed on stage. <laughs> the I whole feel so, day. I feel so blessed that he wants to just rock with us and just like be so involved with us and like we love him so much and like That's somebody who's willing to bet on you. Yeah. yeah. That's everything. And he's like, family. He, he knows is, he's family. Like yeah. He's in the band. Like he, yeah, he is he, the, the he is member. Hundred percent. Next time we'll get him in here too. Yeah, yeah. We, we I'll pick him up when we go to VR. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he lives in our building. We all, we all live in the one building. Do you building. guys live in like a storefront? Yeah. Yes, pretty much. Yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. I was joking. We it live in the UPS like store. The, dude, I actually, I'm gonna send you out with something. I need. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you actually <laughs> could. Yeah, if you ship this. No, actually, no. We- We don't the, don't live. don't give too many details though because yeah. Bardo Bardo got, got delivered. Some, some I got some nice little packets hair. Oh my god! And dirty panties. Yeah. Wait, let's unpack this real quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. wait, 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 yeah, wait, wait. Okay, so Bardo got I opened. It was a red letter <laughs> envelope. A red yeah, a red envelope. And I'm like, oh, well, this is exciting. <laughs> like, what's this? And I thought, I'm like, who would send me a red envelope? Like, maybe it's like a cousin or something. Like, my cousin will randomly send me postcards when she travels or whatever. And I'm like, oh, maybe it's from her. And then I opened it and. Somehow missed the giant just strand of hair taped to the front of the envelope. Not strand, it's like strand, like, chunk, like chunk, a, chunk. a chunk of hair, a, a tuft. And, if you and will. <laughs> inside, there's like inside this envelope, it, it just and it, oh, it says to Bardo, right? But there's no like return address. It's just like not from anyone. I'm like, what? Like it's how you send drugs? Yeah, right. And it was like, really <laughs> sketchy, but it's not drugs. It was, it was this little black thing. I'm like, what is this? I'm like, is it a handkerchief? And I pulled out and I realized, oh no, 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 no. It's very used panties. Very used. Very used. Like, extra little, like, mm, Wait, all the, over. Like, the may as well have part... been used as a tampon. Yeah. Tampon and, so foul. and cum rag at the same time. <laughs> but also the weirdest part was it was the kind of underwear that doesn't have side straps. It's like the sticky that just like oh, front God. to back. It was like, it's like just like the singular piece. I didn't even I, know they had that. Yet. I'm still I, convinced yeah, it was do. something witchy. Like yeah, a, like, like a, a spell or Bardo's something. There's hair, a lock of hair. There's Cummy two. panties it, okay. in a red letter. Yes. It was okay. It's actually there's layers to this. Red letter, <laughs> the front of the letter, the stamp was a like a circus themed stamp. And they wrote Bardo with a heart on it and then drew an arrow to the circus themed stamp. Which I'm like, is this a symbol for something? Which people might also not understand, but like we have full intentions of like creating a traveling circus yeah, tour we're show. The dropout circus. Yeah. So I don't know, maybe there's that connection or yeah. something. Yeah. They know it's up. Clues. But it's like they drew a, an it's arrow weird. and then maybe they're going to kill me at one of our shows, which th- thank you for letting me know, you know? <laughs> and, oh, you know, <laughs> give me some, some advance notice here. <laughs> That'd be a bummer. Please don't kill me. That'd suck. <laughs> um, 
And then the yeah, and then you go on the inside, and there's hair taped to the outside, and then in the inside, there's hair on the inside along with the panties. So it's like they doubled up the hair. They doubled up the hair. So the hair was that a was big kind. part of it. Yeah. Just because you misplaced any, you got extra. Yeah. It was fair because hair gets everywhere, and just like okay, cool. Thank you for sending extras. And I was very flattered. I was very flattered. And the weirdest very part of all of this was that I got home at like 3 a.m. last night and the lights were off in our house. But Bardo is like naked in our living room with the, the, the panties, panties of the blindfold. Yeah, wearing them. <laughs> yeah, I use them as my VR headset. He went out and bought the correct tape and everything. Yeah, I, tape. I wear them. I'm actually wearing them right now. He's just, yeah. doing, no, just... He's doing hot yoga in our yeah. living room. <laughs> with God, the... what the fuck? Bro. It was really mean. Side it note. Was... If if you're the one that did yeah. this, please reach out and just let yeah. us know and never do it again to yeah. anyone. Well, here's here's the thing. Look, uh, I was like, it was cool. It was cool. Like some rock star shit. It was like, hey, like that's dope. <laughs> like we get panties sent. Like that's cool. I felt very flattered, <laughs> but at the same time, it was like, hey, like it's weird that you have my address. Weird that I got this sent to me. Maybe shoot me a DM because I read all those DMs and just say, yo, I have some panties, super cummy. And some hair, can I send it to you? And I'll probably be like, well, no. <laughs> or we're getting a great conversation. And you're like, no, here's the reason why I want to send it to you. And I'm like, oh, well, excellent. Let's let's do it. Send, send away. Honestly, let's make a P.O. box for the panties. A P.O. box, panty box. What if you That's find what out the hair is actually from her beard? She's a bearded lady and she wants to be part of the circus. That's true. We are assuming that this, this is was her a application. Here. What if this was <gasps> it's a resume? Oh, and that, that's what it was the B. They took the letter shit. B from Bardo and drew. So it was beard. Well, she, a, she was, was just showing you that she, she doesn't need a lot of room. She packs light, just one pair of, of panties. And she's already sending them to you, so she doesn't have to bring anything now. You know what? Could you imagine? Right. Could you imagine if some fucking dude sent his commie und- underwear to a girl? What the f- yeah, in the actually, fucking world? That's talk. a bigger conversation we had. Real it's like talk. on the real, like yo, that's some straight up harassment. We yeah. get some weird DMs, to be honest. Like we get a lot of harassment, like, honestly. There's like some, there's some times, and it's weird too being in our position because it's like where this entity that wants to like to you know, we're growing and we want to like make people happy. And I feel like it, it's this weird balance, of, like people pleasing. And I understand like, that's the bummer is like, I wish, honestly, I wish more dudes went through this to realize how fucking weird it is. And they wouldn't do it to women. You know what I mean? That's Cause it's so sucks. creepy. It's weird. You know? And it's like, that's Bad. the thing is like, girls have to deal with this all the fucking time. And it's like, I get it. I understand. It's fucking weird. I just, there's zero part of my head that, puts two and two together of how somebody could feel comfortable getting a pair of used panties and hair. Yeah. Like what's next skin. Well, that's why I think it's a witchy ear. thing. Cause I'm like, yo, the only type of people who are really on shit like that are the ones who are confident in that decision. They're like, yeah. mm, no, I'm doing something here. That's so crazy. Was I'm, the hair at least nicely brushed? It was very straight. straight. It was taped. Okay. It was brown. Cool. It was taped. It was taped to the thing, but then the other hair was like folded in a piece of paper. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, they really knew that loose. you would want to wear some of it. So they put yeah, tape yeah, yeah. on it or already. Eat it or edible. If I was going yeah. to eat it or Dude, something. Maybe it's just a weird looking drugs. Yeah. And you're uh, supposed to eat it. This is micro you haven't, you haven't heard about this? You eat hair. <laughs> They've smoked so much weed that if you eat their hair, you could die. What I, if Bardo I, actually just sent this whole thing to himself yeah. just to impress <laughs> us? <laughs> like, yeah, guys, I got pants. In there. This is how I'm going to start asking people to come on the podcast. I'm just. I'm not going to say anything about the podcast, you but I will it. send them my used panties <laughs> and hair. <laughs> with, with a note that this is a podcast. Wait, no, it says, this is an experiment. Trust me, I live for the experiment, but there is one place in my life that I don't want to be an experiment, and that's when trimming my balls. Luckily, the Performance 4.0 package is here. Inside this package, you will find the Lawnmower 4.0 Trimmer, the Weed Whacker Ear and Nose Trimmer, the Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant, the Crop Reviver Toner, the Performance Boxer Briefs, and a new travel bag to hold all of your new favorite things. I needed the Lawnmower 4.0 so much more than I ever realized. This thing has a ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents, all thanks to their advanced skin-safe technology. A flashlight so I can actually see where I'm trimming. And not only that, but this thing's waterproof, so I can trim just about anywhere. I love this thing, and I love the whole 4.0 package from the lawnmower, the weed whacker, the crop preserver, the crop reviver, and all the free gifts they threw in. Trust me, fellas, your balls will thank you. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code EXPERIMENT at manscaped.com. Com. That's 20% off and free shipping with the code experiment at manscaped.com. 
Unlock your confidence and always use the right tools for the job with Manscaped. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm gonna get a, a package and it's just gonna be all of all of your hair when you shave it. I'm gonna be like, that's not even just like a, a, a tip anymore. That's the whole fucking thing. Yeah. I'm waiting for it. Oh my god. I'll like, snag it when I pick you guys up in the bus. Yeah. This is be- perfect. On our way to Israel. I'll donate my hair to you. I'll take it. We'll we'll put it up, we'll tape it to the wall. We'll start a new thing. Fuck See. people signing the board. I'm just gonna have people leave their hair. That's cool. That, that's that's they, innovative. And then I can clone all of you guys one day. This is an experiment. Honestly, <laughs> a real fucking this experiment. Is a real experiment. I would love to get manscaped cloned. and manscaped. You shave them. Dude, I'm this is working. This is <laughs> you working. shave them and then you put it on the fucking thing. They I got my next ad. Yeah. Yeah, they don't call us creatives for no reason. <laughs> can we read the ad? I want to read the ad. You always want to read the can ad. Can we do it? I don't even know if I have it to read anymore. Like, what do we do? Do we like... You just, you, just Does it come on randomly halfway through? Are you going to do... It comes beginning and middle. So you're going to do the a Manscaped ad right before the panty thing? That'd be a good spot. Yeah. For I will. Manscaped. 100%. Shave you your pubes so you can send them to people. The, the second half of it which I'm, people just heard. Yeah. Like, technically. Like I'm right in the middle. <laughs> starts, right in the middle of the panty story. It starts with... a cease and desist. <laughs> <laughs> Please quit telling people to do this. The ad starts with, I'm always down for an experiment, but there's one place I don't want to be an experiment, and that's when shaving my balls. And then we'll go straight into... Is that is that what... Yeah, that, that's actually what it that's is. That's great... Dude, that's... this. That's the nice. name works with everything, because yeah. everything can be an... Exp- especially shaving your balls. It's dangerous territory. Also. It's it's a scary place oh, to go. I love it's, that. But now with a the manscape, then you're good. I've actually been meaning to get one. This Dude, fact. Yeah, I love my know. manscaped. Use code experiment. I will do that. Code experiment. Use code experiment. Where am I have really? to? I might have to off? upgrade my pack. Uh, I don't think twenty percent. Oh, maybe twenty five. Damn, I'm like, I should know this. Well Sorry, guys. Um, well, look yeah. at this. Manscaped you're just converting. You're converting us. You guys are gonna all be bald. And be <laughs> like, I thought the trimmer was on. <laughs> manscaped. <laughs> I'd be down to be sponsored by Manscaped. That'd be sick. Yeah, I'd be well, down. When you guys want, just let me know. I'll, I'll put you in contact. Nice. Weird well, thing. That and Liquid Death. Yes. The CEO John Manscaped for. is actually a really <laughs> nice guy. It's John Henry Manscaped. <laughs> oh, 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 sorry. I, I sorry. thought it was My Richard bad. Manscaped. The third. <laughs> Richard. <laughs> oh. That actually works really fucking well. Thanks. Well, first of all, I'm so stoked to see how well you guys are doing. I'm so. <laughs> Such a fucking big fan of you guys. Thank you. Uh, Obviously, thank you, you guys are you. friends, and I you. love you. Thank you. We love you. Uh, but but if I didn't know who you are, I would be just as big of a fan. Um, mm, I think you. what you guys are doing is huge. It's incredible. It's necessary. I think the heads you guys have on your shoulders are going to be able to save a lot of people from a lot of bullshit in life. And I think okay. whatever divine energy picked you guys picked correctly and they picked the people that can handle this the most Mm. um so it's been really fucking cool to to just watch every video and get to support and be somebody who can help share what you guys are doing so damn dude thank you thank you you a lot that's fucking really cool to hear well i'm 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 not going anywhere so this will continue (laughs) i'll still have this next time you guys come over Uh, fuck yeah i love it and and next time we come is me upgrade even more It'll, and more and more and more. My bank out will be lower and lower and lower. <laughs> Keep the expensive. Ads. That's true. There I need more money, guys. Yeah. But Beauty School Dropout is going to get sponsored, and they said they're going to give all their money to That's me. Right. We so. actually signed a deal right for this. Yeah. The, the deal we're talking about is with this is an experiment. <laughs> the deal is an experiment. I'm just thinking about all the people that are going to get manscapes from you guys and then sh- send locks of your hair, of their hair, oh, please. that they <laughs> cut with the manscaped. How, this? So How about this? You can only send us pubes and panties if you buy manscaped. There we go. You're welcome. Use code experiment. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, if, but in honesty, no no more panties and no more hair, please, people. Yeah. Well, that's creepy. Yeah, please don't find our address either. Good I think that's that. one of the most unsettling parts of it is Absolutely. not only that, they probably dropped it off. <laughs> no, because it was it was in our mailbox. It was like it's like UPS. Oh, yeah. house oh, we have we have had thing. someone like post up outside before for um, hours for hours, but it wasn't even for us. It was for an artist we were working with, and like who can you say? Um, yeah, it's our friend Noah Uria, and he's like really big in Brazil because he's in this like boy girl group. It's like a co-ed and boy band, yeah. but like co-ed band, but like That's massive like in fifteen South America. person international co-ed mixer of a. Yeah. Super group. It's it's dope. God, it's crazy. like it's like, I, but it's very manufactured, like pop music for South America. That's it. Like, for the whole they're, world, like for the whole world. But like they happen to be massive, but like K-pop like, style. Like, they're like doing stadiums in oh, shit. in Brazil. 
like like stadiums. Well, congrats on working yeah. with them. Well, it, it was cool, but but it's funny because it's like the you know we're working on on his stuff. Yeah, his like and and just like kind of because he makes music. He's one of our buds. Slash, and, are we allowed to talk about? Well, he makes music all the time. Yeah. He like posts it. Oh, okay, cool. I if need be, I'll, I'll just I'll yeah. Beep I mean, he's it not all putting out. music out. He's, we don't not not music, not, you know? not make music with him. You know? Yeah, that's true. Don't unmake music with him. Yeah. We're deleting it all after this. Sometimes yeah. we the sonically combust with each other Besides and make great things. Yeah. Long story short, you know, he had, you know, a fan pull up outside and for like hours just waited for that's like so crazy. He's just wild. So that's I don't scary. Know. Well, you like Which he's, about... he was so sweet about, by the way, because I was yeah. like ready to be like, yo, what the fuck are you doing here? <laughs> Sorry. Like, I just can't anything that I can't. In what world physically, is that appropriate? Anything that I can't mentally, I mean, put myself in like the, that person's shoes. It's just like stuff like that, like the hair fucking standing outside somebody's house. Like you hear the stories of people like back in the day when they wanted to meet the, the, the record producer or whatever to to show them their music. They went and sat outside of Republic or whatever it is for three days straight or whatever those stories are. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Looking back at it, that shit's creepy. That's like that's totally not creepy, yeah. like going and knocking down people's doors. This don't take that literally. Don't put hair when you're knocking yeah. down their doors. Yeah. <laughs> just don't. Boundaries. Yeah. I mean, it's weird though, because it's like it's like that's cool that we have that sort of an impact, you know, but it's also weird. I mean, it's one of those things where like, I'm sure if you guys thought about it pre finding, starting to find your success, that would have been like, Oh, that's so that's so like, that's so rock and roll. That's so badass. And then it happens. And you're like, that's just fucking creepy and unnerving. Yeah. My reaction Super. was, this is rock and roll and badass. We were like, <laughs> yeah, to be honest, I was, I was stoked. With, it was laughing. I, I was mean, like, this is awesome, but I was, then not stoked. It's cool After. to have people <laughs> like you guys enough that they're taking their time out of their day. But like that is very thoughtful. Write yeah. a note and ask. Hit it's, up. It's you know it's consent. It yeah. all boils down to consent. That is that's what this all is all about. It's like you guys have Instagrams. Yeah. You guys have management. You have all these these ways to reach you if need be, and yeah. you guys clearly reach out to people. Go in the fucking Discord. Oh hey, Alex Lunt, may I please yeah. send a wet pair of panties to the guitar <laughs> player of the band you manage? A, a panty hotline. <laughs> Dude, that'd be sick. Like one of those phone numbers that everybody has right now, <laughs> yeah, where all the panties. fans can text. But yeah. it's really just a panty hotline. We do have a phone number. We literally have a phone number in our bio. You could have texted us and be like, "Yo, can I send you some panties?" Do you know what by yeah. heart? Huh? Do you know, know the, the phone number? Yeah. Uh, it's. Can I, I'll read it to you right now. I and, don't know by heart. Well, if that's I, not as impressive. But I'll read it to you. Here's our panty hotline. Well, if everyone sends us panties, we can wash them, print on them, and then resell them. Yeah. Yo. Here's White pa- label. Here's the panty hotline. Or just the text us hotline. Both. Text us. It's both. It doubles. Panty slash text us hotline. Three, the consent hotline. 310-294-8429. Ciao. For beauty school dropout. So yeah, people, no more panties, just hair. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> don't be don't be creepy. Just send your hair. Yeah. Maybe skin. Just hair. <laughs> or ear. Don't <laughs> Dude, send your ear. some Van Gogh shit. Yeah. That'd be pretty cool. If I got an ear, I think I would just move to Brazil. <laughs> probably. If I got a fucking ear in the mail, I'd probably just like cry or something yeah. i would cry but what would... if you went like this and then you're like that's my ear how did that yeah, happen yeah, you get my ear <laughs> oh you my you god my the well, rest of your world had a, is in mono bardo had a wow. bender last night <laughs> i mailed myself my own ear hey you didn't want to lose it while you were out you got a tattoo that just says attach here <laughs> yeah damn i owe you i owe you <laughs> oh speaking of tattoos you, have you always tattooed uh not always i've always done art i think a large part of my life is just creating things whether yeah. that's music or anything but um <laughs> at the beginning of covid i, I started picking up the machine just a because i wanted to learn but also because i needed a side hustle and that worked there's a never-ending demand of people who want shitty tattoos yeah oh yeah yeah <laughs> but like me yeah Exactly. It's yeah, great. We, we, oh, I'm scratchers. Coming. People love them. You know, there's, I'm sure a lot of tattoo artists would probably crucify me for that and hate that. But the fact of the matter is like, I don't know. I've done endless research. I'm so fucking OCD about the sanitary. And I've had like some awesome mentors who are actually willing to like teach me everything about everything that goes into it. And it's so cool. I'm safe about it. So it's like, well, pink, cool. pink has a gun too. You guys should tattoo each other at the same time. Yeah, yeah Pink's we'll gun see. is a little sketchier. I Pink has not done it. the research. <laughs> yeah, we'll see about yeah. that. <laughs> I seem like uh, two hard off Amazon made. and started doing it at a studio. No. See, that's what I want to do. That's more my style. 
Like <laughs> oh, no, no, no sanitary. Like, not you're like, knowing you're like how to do art. Type of guy. Yeah, yeah. Just yeah. like you know, pass it on. Be to be honest, it, it freaks me out. Even knowing as much as I do about it and like taking the proper precautions, I still afterwards I'm like, <laughs> it freaked me the fuck out yeah. to do one. I couldn't actually do one unless the person was like full of them, and I was yeah. like, you won't be able to see this anyways. Totally. Yeah. But that that shit's forever. It's yeah. amazing. But that's why I love it. Is I love. Trust me, I have tattoos where you'll see them and you're like, why the fuck did you do that? Yeah. Um, but it's like those moments, having that is so fun. And nobody says you have to get a, a tattoo on your face or you have to do anything. Like, totally. But if you want something and, and you're, you're you're clearly good at art. The reason I was asking is because I've only seen like on your, your socials and stuff more mm. recently you having the gun. Mm-hmm. But the tattoos are dope. Thank you. Most people, when they first get the gun and you see tattoos and you're like, oh, I'm not going near you. I generally try and do pieces. I mean, I've, I've spent a lot of time like actually trying to learn to be good, but I also try and do pieces that are like custom to me and are actually part of like the artistic vision versus just, you know, what people want. Yeah. Have you I given think, yourself any? Yeah. I just did a, I don't know if I, you'll be able to. That would be my issue. I would have no skin left. That guy. Whoa. Wait, the Marilyn Monroe? Yeah. Yo, that's fucking phenomenal thank you oh shit i took absolute shit care of it because like so much stuff came up i got sick we went to tucson i went to vegas right Life. after like i just he went you know, surfing, surfing the day the after he did his yeah <laughs> that'll do it yeah, yeah definitely. i couldn't turn do it down for sure yeah no. <laughs> it's like i wore a wetsuit and i was like oh, so it's stuck on there yeah, contrary, contrary to everything i just said i didn't take shit care of my own tattoos well once it's on it, hey, it still looks good though thanks only the ones that i do those those to me are kind of like my graveyard ones I, but <laughs> everything else i'm very passionate about making sure it's like the artist's art yeah yeah well i love it you guys are fucking killing it thank I you can't man. wait to get you guys on again thank can't you wait thank to you hear about you guys Anytime. touring the world Oh, can't wait to do it. You guys are fucking come doing on tour with us and we'll just do this every night. Done. That would be so fun. Actually. When does really this come fun. out, by the way? When do you guys want it to come out? It comes out right either now. Monday or Wednesday. Live stream. So whatever day works for you guys as far as what helps you guys out, let's do. Sooner the better, but just wanted to, I guess, wrap it with, if you're in London, if you're in Reading, if you're in Leeds, August, what, 23rd through the 31st, please come out to a show. Come say what's up. Come rock out with us. Send us We're going to be raging. Games. Doing all, yeah, don't do that. Don't but do that. Come rock out with us. This is why they send it to you. Yeah, Bardo. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Bardo's getting a muzzle for next podcast. Yeah. I can't be tamed. I love it. You guys are killing it. Go fucking see him. Go support. Go hit BSD. up their Discord. Wave, beauty.school.dropout on TikTok. What are, what are your personal socials as well? Brent um, Burdett, unfortunately. Yeah. It should be Beepus. Why isn't it Beepus? Because I, the, hey, at Beepus, hit me back. I'm trying to buy the handle off. Wait, of you. is a little Beepus taken though? No, I have that one. Everybody go Change send your do that. Do Beepus. that for now. The other Beepus. Little Beepus. Should I be L- little Beepus? Little Beepus. Little Beepus. That's, Beepus. that's my thing. Little big Beepus. Is hard. Why don't you? Ch- everybody's so little. Why don't you be huge? Because I'm not massive. Massive Beepus. Beepus. Massive Beepus. Yo, the big nine inch beep. <laughs> nine inch beeps. The big nine inch beep. <laughs> <laughs> Justin Beepus. <laughs> oh my God! Yes. <laughs> go go find some nice Beepus. Uh, At Coley Hutzler. Send that to them instead I'm of hair. Bardo. I got the classic. The one word. That's he, so sick. He was gifted with a very rare name. I love it. That's right. I, was, I actually got my handle at birth. Is Bardo you like your your legit first legit name? name? That's so sick. Isn't that wild? Mine's Brad. That's, the fuck? People call me Brad sometimes. <laughs> Do they? So we're kind of like, <laughs> we're like, we're like inverse of each other. Like, I'm like the villain and you're the superhero. <laughs> But like it's like Superman, like anti Superman. I'm oh. anti Superman. You're Superman. I'll take it. Yeah. Hey, yeah, did you hear? Sexy. Shoot shit out of his eyes. Fuck yeah. That's, oh, awesome. that's pretty hot. I'm kind of. Yeah. I'm kind of hard right now. Ain't nobody's coming to fucking give you their hair if you can shoot shit out of your eyes. Yeah. Hell no. Maybe that's the problem. Hell no. It's your hell fault. No. Yeah. But they will mail it to you. <laughs> they will. That's mail why it. they mailed it. They were gonna deliver it, but they knew I could shoot shit out of my eyes. So. Do you think they went to the UPS right by your guys' house and was like, "Can you guys send it next Run this door? Next door, please." We are in that UPS over for me. All the time, yeah. the, the 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 whole big thing that holds all the little styrofoam. You guys are just in the middle in there. Yeah, that's where we sleep. Have we you live. heard of Have you heard uh, Sean Mendez, his his direct competitor company to USPS that he's opening? Sean Sendez. You're joking. This is real. No. He's also got a blender company called Sean, Sean Blendez. Blendez. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, but he also okay. You know those like vending machine things? Yeah. Like Sean Vendez. <laughs> But yeah. the craziest one is he has a sewing company called Sean Mendez. Yeah. That's I think that's the coolest one, to be honest. Generally he gets picked up for consulting jobs where he goes and like forecasts the Sean Trendez. 
<laughs> Did you guys fucking play this? When he upset <laughs> someone, it's Shauna Fendez. <laughs> Yeah, look, see you guys looking down at your notes. Like, I said that one. Oh, we got said these on line. Back when we were living in the hills, he was our neighbor. He knocked on a door for butter and wanted a Sean Lendez. <laughs> <laughs> so we hooked him up. We're ending it there. <laughs> 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 I love you guys. I appreciate you. Thank Everybody, you, lover boy. go support Beauty School Dropout. These guys are amazing. They'll be at a uh, UPS near you. It's true. And, uh, don't send them anything that they don't want to see. Please. Uh, and he, Sean thinks we're Sean Stupendez. <laughs> <laughs> I love you guys. We love you. Thank you so much. Man. Love you. Bye, everybody. We're Beauty School Dropout. And this is an experiment. Uh... Yes. This is an experiment. This. This is an experiment. I'm experimenting. This is an experiment. I'm about We're to experimenting experiment. experimenting so hard right now. Do you want to experiment with each other? Yo, I really like your experiment, dude. Oh, nice. ASMR. Wait. Can we can stage this real quick? Yeah. <gasps> oh, wait. I bet this sounds nice. <laughs> please. Oh, please can't stage oh. for real. <laughs> <laughs> Don't laugh too loud. Hey, sh- shut up. The experience is the experiment.